Well, hello, I'm Pastor David, and this is Pastor Mark McLean. This is Activate, a study in God's Word. And for the next uh, five days, we want to share with you some basic values of New Life Church, but more importantly, five basic values that will help us to establish D1 ministry teams that is going to be an army of believers going out all across the city and all across this region to take our city for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Back a few years ago, after I had arrived at New Life Church, I began really praying about discipleship processes here. And some who are part of New Life that have been here this whole time since I've been here will remember a series of messages that I preached on what is a disciple. It was a series of, I think, 11 or 12 different messages that I preached on what a disciple is. And I began with the disciple is a follower. Someone who makes a decision to follow Jesus Christ until the point that you make a decision to become a follower of Jesus Christ. You're not a disciple. You may be an inquirer, you may be a seeker, you may be a God-fearer, and I've met many of those in my lifetime. In fact, some of the most sincere people I've met in my life are people who are God-fearers and people who are really inquirers, looking out, uh, trying to, much like Nicodemus who came to Jesus at the nighttime, they, they, they already have a a worldview, they have a theological background, a religious background, and, but they're, they're sincerely looking for answers. But just because they're good people, because they're, they believe in God in general, doesn't make them a disciple of Jesus Christ. We become a disciple when we make a decision to become a follower of Jesus Christ. I remember you telling me the story about you, or I think you were a young military man, you were back home visiting your home and your mom had a guest in the house. Just tell that story about that day when you surrendered or the process, uh, just a real brief, te your testimony as we call it, of how you came to be a follower, a disciple of Jesus Christ. Sure. Um, so as quick as I can, I had uh, recently enlisted in the, into the military. I had not yet gone okay. to basic training yet, but I, had, I was sworn in, getting ready to leave. Came home one Sunday evening. Uh, my mom attended this church for many years and uh, had invited some Teen Challenge uh, students back to our home. So I had no idea. I walked in. At the kitchen table, uh, there's this one smiling like crazy. And I said, what are you smiling at? He said, Jesus. And uh, I knew it was an ambush. So the Holy Spirit set up a divine appointment for me. And uh, so... I sat down and uh, probably for the next two hours just had a back and forth um, with this one. His name was Brett. And he, every, every question I had, the Holy Spirit was giving him discernment from the Word of God. It's, it was very alive the way he was speaking because it was speaking to need, speaking to things that I was talking about. It really was rightly discerning my thoughts and uh, intentions. And um, so he asked me if I believed in Jesus Christ. And um, at that point in my life, uh, I wasn't an atheist, but, uh, you know, I, I had Jesus as fire insurance. It's like, okay, if there's a Jesus there, I want to believe in him so I don't have to go to hell. No personal relationship, no living life with him. So he asked if he could pray with me. Um, he did ask, do you want to know Jesus more? I said, oh, yeah, absolutely. He said, can I pray for you? Now, at this point, I'm 20 years old. I had yet to have anybody pray with me one-on-one. -on -one. I know my mom was praying for me, but I wouldn't let her, like, pray with me. So I bowed my head. So, so let me just interrupt you for yeah. a moment. You're 20 years old. Mm -hmm. Your mom, you must have had some church affiliate. I mean, you, you knew about church people, must have been around church people, but you had never had anybody in, invite you to pray with them. Never, no. Had you ever had anybody invite you to, or even ask you, would you like to know Jesus better? No. Isn't that a shame? 20 yeah, years old. 20, no. Nobody had ever talked no. to you. Sorry, sorry yeah. to interrupt your story. So, um, 
So he, he was praying with me, and, and what I now know to be, because he asked, have you ever heard about the baptism in the Holy Spirit? So this is, a, this is another story, Pastor. But as he laid his hands on me, what I now know to be the presence of the Lord, I was just enraptured, um, em, empowered. My tongue started doing this, this funny little dance, you know, making noises. And uh, what I later found out... Um, you know, was our, our doctrine of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. My life has never been the same. My Which life let me just clarify, just clarify, we're on Facebook, and a lot of people may not know. We believe that after you give your heart to Christ, the Spirit of God comes to live inside you, and there's a second, subsequent work that God wants to do, which is called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that is evidenced by the initial physical evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, now, are there evidences? Of course, there are many evidences that a person's been baptized in the Holy Spirit, but we believe the initial physical evidence is speaking in other tongues, and that's what happened to you as you began to pray. The Holy Spirit overwhelmed you, and it wasn't just a matter of overwhelmed you. He overflowed in your life. And, and he you began o- he overflowed, and you know, starting the very next day, there was a hunger and a desire to know this word. Praise God. In fact, when I began to pick it up, it really did come to life right. where before I had tried to read the Bible you know out of interest but I you know I'd, I'd get bored very quickly but now it was a living reality speaking life and power in my life so something the Holy changed Spirit right was away. making the word of God come alive in your life right hallelujah so anyways you made a decision to follow Christ uh, and began that journey walking with Jesus you became a follower a disciple of Jesus Christ The second point that you may remember that I preached on as a disciple is then a learner. Uh, We're going to go back to that in just a moment. But a disciple is a learner. And and we don't want to just learn facts. The truth is a disciple of any rabbi, let alone Jesus' disciples, but any rabbi in the day and time of Lord Jesus, those who considered themselves disciples didn't want to just know what their, their rabbi or their teacher knew. They didn't want to just have the intellectual. They wanted to be just like yeah. their rabbi. And we see in, in the Gospels the story of those 12, we call them the apostles, the first 12 disciples of Jesus Christ. They certainly had that desire to be like Jesus. They wanted to learn from him. And he invited them and said, come, learn from me. So the second is to be a learner. And we're going to go back to that just a minute, Pastor Mark. The third thing is to be a disciple, is a worker. Here during the last few couple of years, the last really three, four years, as I prayed and waited on the Lord, there was a time where God spoke to me and said, if I would wait on him, that he would give us here at New Life Church discipleship processes that would work here that God would help us to be able to find processes to help disciple people. And so during the last couple of years, we've we've started a discipleship hour. We've continued our growth groups. But what we realized was that a disciple is somebody who's not only a follower, that's the starting point, that's the door to get you into the household of faith, to become a follower of Jesus, A disciple is a learner, somebody who wants to become more like Jesus. And how do you become? How do you learn? What are the ways that we learn? We're going to talk about that. But the third thing is to be a worker. And so that a disciple of Jesus Christ, by the nature of being a disciple, is somebody who's going to make disciples. And so it's not enough just to say, well, you you follow Jesus. You're learning about Jesus in the Bible and learning about Jesus in our classes. Now stand at the door and be an usher. I believe the Bible is calling us to more than just being an usher, which the ushering ministry is important because it's helping people come in. It's helping people feel accepted when they come into the house of God. There are a lot of great things an usher does, but I believe that every believer in Jesus Christ is called to be a worker in that we are called ourselves to make disciples. Just as as we have become disciples, now as the part of the process of being a disciple is not only to be a follower, a learner, but it is to be a worker. And to be a worker of Jesus Christ specifically is to make other disciples. It was in that process, and it was really early on in my time here at New Life Church, that we came up with a slogan that is on the boards up above the screens here in our sanctuary that says D1 or Disciple 1. 
And, and people said, well, do you only want me just to disciple one person? And my response has always been, no, it's not a matter that you can only disciple one. It's a matter of at least start with one. Mm. Get started somewhere. Too many people don't ever start. They, get, they, they become a follower of Christ. They start reading the Bible, doing what we would call learning, but they never go to the point of making a disciple. And so as we've been praying during the last few months, and as you've been a part of this team, we have decided that we are going to be to really emphasize that New Life Church is going to be a church of disciples. This is a D1 church, a disciple one church. Start with at least once. Everybody has to be discipling somebody. We are raising up an army of believers, an army of disciples who are going to make disciples of Jesus Christ. And it is through that that we are going to take this city. So that this church, we're going to start referring to ourselves as a D1 church. We are a D1 church. Hallelujah. And the D1 church is going to be made up of a host of army of disciples that we're going to call D1 ministry teams. Hallelujah. And we want everybody to get involved in a ministry team because this is, it is through our teams that we, are, that we believe God's going to help us to see individuals grow, but more importantly, for us to begin doing the work of ministry, taking this and taking our city for Jesus Christ. And so that's just a kind of big overview. Uh, you've been a part of that discussion. Anything you'd like to add to that before we talk, start talking specifically about the values of what New Life Church is built on and the values of which we believe these D1 ministry teams are going to be built on? Anything to, to share? Well, I love the word there, team ministry. Mm -hmm. Uh, nobody likes doing ministry alone, and sometimes that can be not a little bit... Not only do we not like to do it, but I don't believe it's biblical to, it's to do biblical. it alone. That's Go correct, ahead. yeah. I mean, Jesus, when he sent out his disciples, he sent them out two by two. He sent them out in teams. So there's something encouraging and empowering when uh, not only with when you're with somebody else, but one of our values is the power of the Holy Spirit to begin to just press into the presence and allow an awareness of his presence to empower us so we can be reaching out, making dis uh, disciples. So it is very difficult, if not impossible, to be a disciple if there's not that flow outward. So Jesus is standing orders to us. It was He doesn't say go and be a disciple. He says go and make disciples. And the only way we do that is as we are reaching out. So here at New Life Church, our vision, the vision statement that I believe God put in our heart is so simple that at times I've almost felt like I had to apologize because it's so close to just being the Bible words you just used. It's out of Matthew 28 and verse number 19, where Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciples of every nation. Well, from that, we came up with our vision statement, how we see ourselves now and how we see ourselves in the future, that our vision statement is we are disciples of Jesus Christ. Our mission statement that came out of that then, very simple, once again, almost, almost too simple, is we make disciples of Jesus Christ. Exactly what you just said. If we are disciples, then we've got to be disciples. And being a disciple means to make disciples. Hallelujah. So the question is, how do we do that? You know, another beautiful thing about that passage, a gift of this church specifically is the, the, the many, many nations that are represented sure. here. So in a sense, there's already an, an, an army being stirred up right. across a lot of different lines. And, we, we've, and I think it's a really good point here at New Life Church. We already are that army. We just got to get organized into ministry groups and teams that we can minister to one another and minister to God, and minister to those outside of the church. Ministry to one another, ministry to God, ministry to one another. Now, let's transition for a few moments into, we have vision statement, we are disciples of Jesus Christ. Mission statement, we make disciples of Jesus Christ. What are our values? We have five basic values that I think almost anything that we could talk about that is important to us here at New Life Church come under these five things. Number one, the Word of God. And you and I are going to talk about that now in just a few moments. Number two, prayer. Prayer is important. We have, just as we have D1, Disciple 1, we have P1, or Pray First, is, a, is, is just a baseline oh, yeah. value here at New Life Church. Number three, 
the work and the person of the Holy Spirit. Back a couple of weeks ago here on Activate, we talked about the work and the person of the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. We're going to talk more about that. And it's not a matter of just talking about what you said in your own experience that day, that young Teen Challenge student, whatever his name is, God bless him, whoever he was mm -hmm. that sat at your table and asked you, do you want to know more about Jesus? Led you probably in a sinner's mm -hmm. prayer or somehow began to pray and ask Christ into your life. And the next thing, you're baptized <laughs> in the Holy Spirit. Without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we're not really, we're not fully qualified to do ministry. Now, can people who are not baptized in the Holy Spirit start doing some, telling people about Jesus? Of course you can. But the empowering work of the Holy Spirit is important. So the Word of God, prayer, the Holy Spirit. Number four, fellowship. We believe in fellowship with God and fellowship with one another. And number five, evangelism. Evangelism to me is an important integral part of discipleship because you cannot be a disciple of Jesus Christ unless you come to Christ. We cannot make disciples unless we, unless we bring people to Christ. So the, the, the importance of evangelism cannot be overemphasized that we must be making disciples of Jesus Christ through evangelism, through outreaches. So we're building these ministry teams to, again, let's say it, minister to one another, to minister to God, we should, say it op we should say it, first of all, to minister to God, to minister to others, and thirdly, to minister to, to the unsaved. With that having been said, and that's such an in inadequate introduction, but during this week, we'll talk, I'll talk more about that. Um, today, you're sitting with me to kind of talk about the first value, and that is the Word of God. Um, the Word of God, when we talk about the Word, usually people only think about the Bible. The Bible is, of course, God's written word to us. But talk to us a little bit uh, for a few moments about different aspects. What, when, we, when we're talking about the word of God here at New Life Church, uh, we're talking not just about the written word, but different aspects of the word of God that God wants to use as a foundation of growth in our life and as a foundation of ministry to others. That being said... Help us just a little bit. Talk yeah, to so, us and take us through some, a few scriptures. Sure. So, um, you know, it's interesting because Jesus, he pointed out to the scholars of the day who, quote unquote, knew the word. And he said, you're, you're searching, looking for eternal life in that word, in those scriptures, but they point to me. Mm -hmm. So we do have the written word of, of God, but Jesus is always the living word. And in John 1, he is referred to as, in the Greek word, as logos. Hallelujah. Uh, he is the, the word of, of God. Sorry, go ahead. So, so this word speaks about Jesus' heart, his mind, his life, his desires. It's always reflecting back to him. So we don't go to this word just to get a formula for life or just to get success this way or the other, if that's void of an intimate relationship with Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit, then we're missing out. So we are going to look at just a couple of verses here. Let, let's carry, sure. take, take it yeah. one step further. The Word, which is the written Word of God, the Bible, Jesus, the living Word, but then we also just cannot release, we can't move forward without at least saying that we believe that this living Word is breathe, God breathe, by whom? By the Holy Spirit. So there is revelational word to us that comes to us not only through the written word, through our relationship with Jesus, but even the Holy Spirit is able to speak to us. And when the Holy Spirit speaks to us, he is speaking God's word. Sorry to interrupt you, Hallelujah. but it just felt like we couldn't forget that and leave that aside. So yeah, well, let's start with that scripture. Uh, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, many of you are going to be aware of this passage, but uh, it's very important to us. 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, verse 16 and 17, it says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Let me stop there just for a second because this is important. In the Greek, that word literally means breathed out yep. by God. In other words, it's His very spirit, His presence, His life flowing into this word. That makes it different than a a poem or, or some famous person writing. And I know in your, I think your doctoral studies or some higher education, you, you, you studied some of the classics. That's what separates this from Homer uh, yes. or any of the others. This word, of, this word 
is a written word, but it's God breathed. It's, it's got, it comes to life by the Spirit of God into our lives. So, I mean, just think about that picture. So it's not just ink on a page. It's the very life of the Lord bringing his strength and his empowerment and encouragement. And literally it says it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man or the person of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So as we're building these ministry teams, as we're releasing people into their, uh, their callings and their giftings, it's by this word that they are built up and equipped and strengthened and where the word can become alive in their own heart and life. Sorry to interrupt you, but again, <laughs> it just, it, this says so much, just that we could only talk about this verse yes. and, and, and be able to stop with today's teaching if we wanted to do so. Because right here it says that so that the person of God could be equipped for what? To do ministry. Hallelujah. So, you know, they're, they're, sadly, there are way too many Christians who read this. They understand a disciple is a, is, a, is a follower and a learner. But they see learning as just me getting smarter and smarter. It's a, it's a tree just growing bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. But the problem is that tree growing bigger and bigger is like that fig tree by the side of the road that Jesus came and it didn't have any fruit on it. Didn't yes. have any figs on it. We got way too many people just getting big and fat and sassy in the church they've learned they know a lot about the bible but they don't understand this word is given it's in, it's breathed by the holy spirit so that you and i so that every person watching this who is a believer a follower a disciple of jesus christ so that every one of us can do the work of god hallelujah sorry i'm getting i'm getting that's a little bit great no, about so, it, but it's, so we're, we're called to be fruitful we're called yeah. to multiply and you know to your point many of us um we're like an apple and we just like to keep shining our apple, right? We, 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 we like to make sure our apple's okay. Now, and what does the Bible say? Knowledge does what? It puffs, puffs up. up. And yeah. I've met a lot of people who know a lot about the Bible, but that's the problem. They just puffed up. They're arrogant. They're not doing anything. Puffed up, fat people sitting on the mm. pew not doing anything. I'm not talking about physically fat. I'm yeah. talking about spiritually just people that are not doing anything for the kingdom of God. They don't understand the reason this word's been given is yes, to help me grow. Yes, help me to be like Jesus. But if I want to be like Jesus, Jesus was going everywhere, healing the sick, casting out devils, doing good to all those who were oppressed by the devil. Hallelujah. So as, as we are uh, learners and followers, we want to follow his life, not just in his footsteps, but the anointing that he has given us through this word that apple can turn into a tree an Praise apple God. tree with seed with seed or some maybe it might even turn into an orchard so you know that the life of god in something when it's released becomes incredibly powerful if you don't mind take us for just a few moments to hebrews 4 our time is almost finished but hebrews 4 and verse number 12 and just elaborate on that Ooh, for just a moment yeah, another powerful verse yeah. for the word of god is living and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the division of soul and spirit joints and marrow it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart Praise so again it's a living powerful um, entity. It's, it's, it's living with the breath and the life of God. And that means that um, it, it, it does something in us. It, it changes us. It transforms us, even our thoughts and intent. So we have all kinds of weird thoughts. We have an opinion from our mama. We have an opinion from a teacher. We have an opinion from the new shows we watch. This word will judge all of those things and give us the mind and the heart and the attitude of the Lord to make sure we're walking in his footsteps. So a disciple is a person who is a follower of Jesus Christ and a person who wants to be like Jesus. And what I think this word, what we're hearing today is the word of God is, a, is foundational for us to be like Jesus. Hallelujah. So the word of God is a value here at New Life Church. A value because it is thereby through this word that I'm going to go personally but it is a value, secondly, that is a foundation for any kind of ministry, any kind of work that I am called to do for the kingdom of God. I uh, just want to remind you today that um, 
these, some of these notes will be available on our Discipleship Resource Center at newlifema.com. We'll have a PDF with these scriptures and a few more. And then about a week from now, you and I are going to be talking for, uh, I, I suppose you and I, maybe some, some of the other ministry team. But anyways, we'll be devoting an entire week to uh, more scripture and, and more time looking at God's word as a value, a foundation for our life. So thank you for joining us today. Pastor Mark, I'm going to ask you if you would to close in prayer. And uh, we're looking forward to what God's going to do here at New Light Church through, oh, yeah. through a People who are true disciples of Jesus Christ, making disciples of Jesus Christ. We're D1 church, D1 ministry teams. We're going to make disciples. Amen. Pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor David. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your vision for this house. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would just quicken it so near and dear to our hearts. Lord, that we're called to make disciples. Lord, that it, it is the overflow of your presence in our lives that wants to pull people into the kingdom of God, to release them to their purpose and calling that you've given each one. I pray, Lord, each one may be able to recognize the anointing that you have given them and to begin to stir that up, quicken this living word into each heart. God, I pray for a fresh revelation for everybody who comes to the word, Lord, may you open up our eyes that we may see beautiful and delightful things in your law. We love you. We love you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Praise Hallelujah. God.